It's five hours left to cast your votes early ahead of Election Day tomorrow. Our Pauline Lee is live in St. Paul with a look at how the last day of early voting is going. Pauline. Hey, Shayla. Yeah, in terms of early voting, the last few days leading up to Election Day, including today, tend to be a busy one for Ramsey County. In fact, the county building here off Plato Boulevard, it opened this morning. More than 70 people lined up to cast their ballots within the first hour of it being open. Ever since, there's just been a steady stream of people coming in to cast their ballots. Now, the voters we talked to, the biggest benefit of voting early as skipping that potentially long line expected tomorrow. Weather could also be a factor. We could see maybe some raindrops tomorrow as well. Uh, this year, a number of key issues are bringing voters out to the polls. I think abortion, uh, it should be up to the women. They want to end Medicare and Social Security and call it an entitlement when it's something that you've already paid into. If we don't fix, fix the air we breathe and, and the climate we have, uh, we're not going to pass much along to the people who follow us. The economy and safety, also big topics for voters this year. Well, one note from election officials here in Ramsey County, up to 20% of the polling locations changed this year. That's because it was a redistricting year. So if you have any questions on where to vote, perhaps what you need to bring, if you need to register to vote, just head to our website, mnvotes.org. That's the website you need. We have that linked on to WCCO.com. Shayla, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you so much, Pauline. An early voting block party in Minneapolis saw a major turnout. Souls to the Polls is an annual event that aims to provide voter information and resources for those in need of it. Attendees were encouraged to cast their vote while enjoying food, entertainment, music, and more. Souls to the Polls coordinator Shamika Bogan says the event is key in helping spread the word about getting out the vote. It's really about getting the message out about voting, but when you're able to have free food, you're able to have live music, it really kind of breaks those walls down for people that may not be into politics and they're able to hear something that maybe they didn't hear before. The Minnesota Timberwolves and Lynx were also on site to provide giveaways to attendees. There were also appearances from mascots Crunch and Prowl. Many of the races in Minnesota are very close. According to polls, political experts say voter turnout could make all the difference. The final poll on Minnesota races comes from KSTP Survey USA. In that poll, Governor Tim Walz leads Republican Scott Jensen 51% to 43%. 4% are undecided and 2% say they prefer someone else. In the attorney general's race, Republican Jim Schultz has a lead over DFL incumbent Keith Ellison by seven points. 49% to 42% with 9% undecided. This poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 3.9%. Things can also shift at the last minute. Take the AG's race four years ago. This same poll in late October had Ellison trailing his Republican opponent, Doug Wardlow, by seven points. Ellison ended up winning by four points. Political experts are split on which way the race could go. It, got, it was real close in 2018, which was a terrible year for Republicans, and yet he was struggling in 2018. Now you come to 2022, it's a great year for Republicans. We have a good candidate on the ballot who's run a great campaign. Uh, I think that this is, um, I think this is Jim Schultz's to win. But there's no question this is a close race. If you do a poll of polls, though, not this one poll, but yeah. look at all of them, it's about a 50-50 split. And in that environment, it's going to come down to who has the best operation. Hands down, Keith Ellison has a better turnout operation than Jim Schultz, and I think that's going to make the difference on Election Day. You can learn more about where all of our local candidates stand on key issues by checking out our election guide. You can find it on WCCO.com. We're also following some key races in battleground states across the country. With the balance of power up for grabs in Congress, both parties are bringing out political heavyweights in some of the most competitive races. We saw our current president and three former presidents on the campaign trail over the weekend. Deborah Alfaron has the latest from Washington, D.C. This is it, the last full day of campaigning for Republican Mehmet Oz and Democrat John Fetterman in their razor-tight battle for a Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Tuesday, it's, it's all going to be, you know, uh, it's going to come down to every single vote. We'll bring change to Washington so they treat us the way we deserve. 
former President Trump campaigned for Oz over the weekend, while President Biden and former President Obama offered their political star power to Fetterman. Hello. In Georgia, two and a half million voters have already cast ballots, where Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger, Herschel Walker, are locked in a dead heat. In the race for governor in Georgia, incumbent Brian Kemp has an edge in the polls over Democrat Stacey Abrams, who is seeking to become the first black female governor in U.S. history. If no candidate gets 50 percent of the vote tomorrow night, a runoff election would take place in December. On Tuesday, there's a lot at stake nationwide. Every seat in the U.S. House is up for grabs, along with 35 Senate seats and 36 governorships. That has voters coming out early. Already more than 40 million have cast their ballots. We're expecting right now near record turnout could hit around 120 million. And with so many close races, election analysts are asking voters to be patient while the votes are being counted. We have very complex ballots in the United States, multiple pages, dozens of races. Let them do their jobs. It might take a few days. Election officials are also focused on security. They say safety is a primary goal at polling places across the country. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Washington. In Minnesota, you can register to vote once you get to the polls. All it takes is proof of residence.